short uh, presentation is going to touch on some research that's been done and some statistics on uh, children who watch too much violent programming. Then we're going to get into a little history of violent programming, you know, back in the day. And then we're going to uh, bring it back to the present, talk about some real events that have occurred, and uh, we're going to talk about some technological advances that can keep folks from uh, having their kids watch too much violent programming, you feel me? You saw what I'm saying? Alright then, let's start off with some of these uh, studies. You got this one study uh, performed by four universities and funded by the cable industry. It said almost 2,700 shows looked at in a 20 week study of 23 channels. 57% at least had some videos. Oh, some violence, my fault. <laughs> but on that study, the names of the channels weren't stated and uh, a lot of cable companies got over 100 some channels now. so. You know, that study. <laughs> Got one here in 1995. The National Television Violence Study found that 47% of all the violent actions shown ended in no evident harm to the victim. Only 16% of the violent television shows conveyed a point about long-term harmful aftermath of violence. And an enormous 73% of the violent pictures, the suspect went scot-free. And then in 1960, Rowell Huseman and Leonard E. Rom, they started following some eight-year-olds around the country uh, who watched uh, violent television. And they followed them from 1971 to 1981 to 1994. And then in 2003, they published The Lasting Effects of Television Violence. Found out that 329 of the little kids they have followed, who are now adults, they uh, got a whole bunch of convictions, some convicted felons, some uh, moving traffic violations and a whole bunch of spousal abusers. Alright, let's get into some of this violent programming history. We got uh, the Romans. We got Emperor Vespasian. He opened the uh, Roman Colosseum in 80 AD. And, uh, they held games that consisted of slaves and gladiators battling to the death with lions, bears, and exotic beasts. Uh, oh yeah, some of these beasts are extinct to this day because of the bloodthirsty audience's greed for the spectacles. Mm -hmm. And uh, philosophers like Epictetus would vouch for us that uh, young children back then was uh, watching some of this violent stuff and they might have been a... Uh, Influenced to join the Roman army or maybe even be a gladiator. I guess so they can kill somebody All right enough of that history uh, We got here on April 20th 1999 high school students Eric and Dylan walked into Columbine High School located in Littleton, Colorado equipped with explosives bombs sawed-off shotguns and handguns Yeah Seven years afterward, uh, we're still looking for a reason to why these two teenagers from prosperous family units decided to take such a vicious action. Then uh, in 1996, Bill Clinton proposed the Telecommunications Act of 1966, oh I'm sorry, 1996, my fault, which discussed using the V-chip device on television sets. The V-chip is designed to use the television parental rating system to help parents monitor the type of television the child is watching using channels, blockers, and passwords, and things of that sort. And then Bill Clinton proposed stretching the extent of the V-chip to the internet by enforcing parental options on internet browsers like AOL and Yahoo. And then we got data from the U.S. Census Bureau shows that in 2000, 65% of children aged 3 to 17 lived in households with computers, and nearly 90% of the 6 to 17 year olds had used computers at either home or school, with more than 75% of children reporting that they played video games. Uh, and apparently video games are more violent these days because uh, 
you get to kill people and shoot people inside the game and come back to life. And uh, in recent years, it's uh, harder for parents to watch what their kids are doing on the internet and things of that nature because uh, parents aren't as good at using these type of devices as well as their kids. The kids been going in and watching stuff like bum fights and things like that. So, they're going to get crazier and crazier. There's uh, no crazier stuff out there. Alright, running out of time here. I'm going to conclude with uh, a little something to leave with. Uh, the parents cannot be left alone to ponder on ways to keep their children safe from themselves. Rather, the communities which we all live in should adjust what is considered to be tolerable and adjust what type of responsibilities children should be allowed to take on. In closing, more attention should be centered on how these influenced aggressions can be channeled into something more productive. And that's all I'm going to say about violent programming on TV and in other forms of media.